Hi everyone, my name's Pieta Valentine. I've written two books, The Residence Voice from a Dementia Unit and The Residence Rise from a Dementia Unit. Today's video is on a dementia unit as a battleground, when it is a battleground, and more often the case than what we'd like to think. In terms of the frequency of violence in a dementia facility, it's a lot more than in a nursing home, for example, or a rest home. Uh, often rest homes are at the base on the first floor of buildings and the dementia facility is upstairs. And you find that the rest home comparatively is calm, quiet, almost monotonous sometimes. Um, I've actually not witnessed violence in a rest home myself, and I've worked in them actually all my life as a physio, but in a dementia facility, on many occasions I've witnessed violence. And I think, you know, one of the key reasons is because people can't get out. They're so frustrated and stressed because they just have no release. And, you know, all of that builds up and aggression and anger as a result, whereas if they could get out, if they could get out to walk and be amongst the birds and fresh air and sunshine, it makes so much difference to get all that, you know, endorphins and things flooding through your system rather than all that um, stress and anxiety, you know, muscle tension, mental tension. It's very hard to release once you're in a dementia unit and you can't get outside and exercise. And of course, this, if there's one resident that's high escalated, it will just ripple out to everyone else. That's the problem. So it's really challenging, really. This is actually one of the main challenges of being in a dementia unit, is coping with the violence, the aggression, you know, the sarcasm, and all, all of the sort of the battle tactics that go on uh, in a dementia facility. Um, one example of this was at one facility I worked at years ago, there was this woman who, um, she'd been a seamstress. She came from London. She was, I don't know if she was well-to-do, but she'd obviously been around the well-to-do, very well-dressed. Even if she wasn't well-dressed, she was tall, slim and slender and seemed to be able to drape things over her and look amazing. She'd get the um, tablecloths and serviettes and make hats out of them and shawls and... <laughs> She was actually quite funny, but she had this terrible, acerbic, sarcastic wit, and she was very demeaning and very hurtful. You know, she was, and she wouldn't let up. She wouldn't let up. I mean, she had no friends because of this, of course. She'd sit in the corner and just fire away the whole day. Um, if she noticed that one of the staff had put on weight, or one of the residents, common in both camps, um, she'd say, oh, you know, put on weight, have we? And mm, what have we been eating lately? Mm, so what's happening here? And on she'd go. And she had, she actually had, um, she, she had a loud voice. It was a, I would call a penetrating voice. She wasn't shouting, but somehow it seemed to just go right throughout the unit. And it was on and on and on. And one or two of, I mean, everyone was stressed with it. Um, but one or two of the ladies that were more able used to try and fire back at her and she'd just escalate right up and keep attacking, keep attacking, you know, um, and, you know, chase after them and just taunt the whole way. I don't know where she got the energy to do that or the interest, you know, but that was just her character. I mean, lots of people say, yes, it's dementia, all of these things, and in part, yes, but maybe that was her personality before because her, her daughter did, come initially with asparagus rolls once a week, but stopped, you know, visiting after, I think, a month. We didn't see her after that. She sort of left, <laughs> left her to the rest of us. <laughs> um, another uh, reason for aggression or the sort of battleground tactics, there was another woman at another unit, oh no, actually the same unit that this uh, taunting woman was at, and she... Um, she did have a foghorn, a really loud voice. I don't know where she got that volume from, but it was loud and, you know, barraging. It was sort of like, you know, Sergeant Major type voice. <laughs> and she'd stand up like in the middle of the sitting room and shout 
where am you know where am i what what's happening where am i going and you know all that sort of monologue she was she was confused in one sense but often not in another she knew what was going on but she was disorientated with direction orientation but in terms of what everyone else was doing she seemed to be pretty on to it but when she was going through one of these instances of where am i what am you know what's happening um you know and she'd repeat this like for a solid hour same monologue the uh the sarcastic woman in the corner would say oh well if you don't know i don't know and if i don't know you don't know and she'd sort of go on like this like a shakespearean monologue and of course this woman got so fired up everyone else would get fired up and then probably the biggest loss in all this uh battleground tactics the biggest loss is when the core group who have been focusing and concentrating and working hard to get their thinking on track, you know, and their reading and going to the workshops and keeping stable and strong and level-headed. The saddest thing really was when they, you know, it takes time to accumulate tolerance and patience in such an environment. It takes, it's incredible, incredible discipline is required to be able to harness the tolerance not to react and uh, shout out and shout back. So most of the core group generally kept their uh, tolerance and patience intact and could keep things under control. But sometimes it got to a point where one of them would shout out and you know tell her to shut up. And of course that provoked her, which was made it worse. Um, so, and then of course the person that had shouted out sort of had lost their call and then to try and get that patience and tolerance back again after that, when they become so escalated, you know, it's really extremely difficult. So, I mean, residents used to protect each other and help each other. They really just used to say, and in such an instance, they'd say, look, um, don't say anything. It's not worth it, you know, because if you say something, she'll just get worse and we'll all lose our call and all this patience, you know, we'll lose our patience and then we've gotten nothing left after that so they just would put up with this god it was really hard so um in terms of you as a relative if you see when you go into a unit that this escalating dialogue and tactics is happening take your mother to a quiet place give her respite don't just sit there and tolerate it with her you know she any respite in such a situation will help you know an hour on the veranda half an hour in the room, just calm down with her and let, let her have a break from it all. And when you bring her back to the room or the lounge after the visit, put her in a place where she's protected by a friend or in the quietest spot that you can put her, um, where there's someone else around that she knows, you know? So it's the most secure place that she can be anyway. Um, and, you know, there's very little that can be done, really. I mean, staff do their best, you know, um, but they're often up in the rooms, you know, doing the cares. They're not always in the lounge where most of this happens. So whatever you can do as a relative, you can direct uh, residents away from danger if it's happening. Um, you know, take your mother to a quiet place. But I think really the main thing is if we ourselves keep calm, as relatives visiting the unit and as staff, if we ourselves can keep cool and keep, you know, disciplined. And of course, as staff, you have the ability to try and de-escalate these people. That in itself is not always easy either, I might add, but at least we have to be careful uh, that we don't become stressed out because that also will ripple out. So us being able to garner that discipline within ourselves will actually have a secondary impact in the unit. So that's it on battleground tactics in a dementia unit. And the next video, I'll speak more about how residents protect each other um, against aggression and violence in a dementia unit. So if you know of anyone experiencing such things with their family or friends, please pass this on and thank you for your likes and uh, please subscribe if you're interested in this channel. I really appreciate all your support. Thank you.